So in previous video we've seen how to create a model class and repository. Now let's make use of them and expose our first endpoint. Before we create a controller, let's add a new package and introduce a new service layer to our project. Let's create a Kotlin class called app user service. To make it a spring bin, let's annotate it with a service annotation and let's inject our repository app user repository right here. Finally, we can add a new method function which will be called find all and will be used to find all users of our application app user flux equal app user repository and let's use the find all method. As you can see, this method is shipped through reactive CRUD repository with other ones like is like save, find by ID, etc. Of course, we can add additional method to our app user repository later. Nevertheless, let's get back to our application, hit on the main package and create a new one called controller. Right here, we'll put app user controller which will be used to expose endpoints related to app user resource. Let's call it app user controller. These names are up to you totally. To make it a REST controller, let's annotate that with REST controller annotation. Additionally, I'll add one request mapping right here and put the string of API here I'll describe what exactly it does later. Nevertheless, for now, let's add a new method called get all. Again, this will be returning a flux of app user. Alt enter, import the flux equals, and we have to make use of our app user service to use a method exposed rider, app user service, find all. Nevertheless, to inform Spring Boot that this specific method should be used when we are hitting a specific endpoint, we have to annotate it. To do so, we'll use get mapping, as the name suggests, all the requests coming to a specific string, which I'll put here, will be handled by this method. So. I'll call it user. The request mapping right here with API means that in order to use this method, I'll have to query slash API slash user endpoint. Let's stop our application, rerun. As I told you, you can do that with shift plus F10 shortcut. When it starts, let's open up Postman or any other tool you are using. You can use curl, for instance, localhost 8080 API users or user. Ah, let's make it plural, plural and restart. Let's get back right here and hit send. As we can see, everything is working as expected and the data that we populated are returned correctly. The next thing I would like to show you will be how to get a specific user by the identifier and later how to handle a case when the user was not found. So let's get back to IntelliJ and let's get back once again to app user service. Right here, I'll add a new find by ID, which will return this time the mono, which stands for one item, whereas the flux is for returning plenty of items. You may find it a bit similar to comparison to a list, but that's not the same. App user, and now app user repository, find by ID. Let's add ID. So we need to add a new parameter right here, which will be of the long type. Let's get back to the controller. And this time we'll have to expose a new endpoint. So let's add a new method which will be called get by ID 
and similarly it will be taking the ID argument nevertheless returning mono app user and invoking our user find by ID ID let's navigate to the mono hit alt enter control alt plus L and we can format this again to make use of this method we have to annotate this with get mapping slash users and the next path segment will be id as you can see these curly braces will be used to inject the value which user specifies right here nevertheless to make use of that we have to annotate our argument with path value alt enter import this time just like we did with the columns if this was would be some kind of another name another name then we would have to mark it right here to make the binding between this path segment and the identifier now when i hit stop shift plus f10 i'll rerun the application and once again open up postman slash let's hit one this is correct only the one user is returned similarly for the id 2 nevertheless we don't have any user with id 3 let's see what's happening that's not too good we don't have anybody right here and the status is 200 okay i believe it would be better to handle that with 404 not fun so let's get back to our IntelliJ application and the next thing we would like to go is adding a new class which will be responsible for shipping the data and appropriate status codes to api consumer to do so i will create a new kotlin file and i will code errors calls will be using later more types of errors in our application let's add a new data class and call it not found exception it will use msg of the string type to make an exception the easiest way will be extending runtime exception and forwarding to its constructor our message will, which will be adding later in order to return a very specific status code to the user when a given class uh, exception is thrown, we can use a response status annotation and provide what type of HTTP status we would like to use. I'll go with not found. Let's get back to our service and handle right here the case that the user with the given identifier was not found to do so let's add switch if empty mono error and right here we have to provide our freshly created not found exception which i will put where i will put a message that user with id we can eject the identifier into the spring was not found this time we should expect that the appropriate status code is returned. Let's hit Shift F10, stop and rerun. Sorry, stop and rerun. And when the application starts, let's navigate back to our postman. Let's hit Send. What's happening now? We can see that the status is 404 not found, which is the desired state. To verify, let's see that it's still working, which is correct for user with identifier free here. Nevertheless, for the error, we can see only not found. How to change that? So Spring Boot, I'm not sure from which version started hiding this message by default. And to change that, we need to get back to our project and open up application YAML. Let's add a new line server error include message and specify always this way we'll be able to inform a user 
what exactly happened and to forward our messages to the API consumer. Let's get back to Postman, hit set once again, and we can see right here the message pop up and we can see what exactly is happening in our application. And that would be all for this video. In the next one, I will show you how to create new users.